Let's take a look at a Watergate, a two player only card driven ga game based on one of the most well known political scandals in history. All right, Watergate was designed by Thais Kramer and features art by Clement Franz, Alfred Victor Schultz, and published by more than 10 different. My particular copy, and the one we'll be looking at tonight, is from Capstone Games. This was published in 2019. Now, in addition to the black shattered glass covered version that I own, Capstone also produced a white box version that, as far as I can tell, was a Barnes & Noble exclusive. Note, the only difference between these two, cover, these two games is the box cover, so the review will apply to both. Now, Watergate plays two players and two players only, with games lasting anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, with most games being played lasting closer to the 20-30 minute range. Now, while this wasn't a review copy, we still took the time to record an unboxing video for this very popular two-player game. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. All right, there is not a lot to see here. This is a small box game uh, with a small four-fold board. Uh, it's card driven, so there are two decks of cards with a couple reference cards. Cards are really nice quality. Um, they are large though, like they're larger than you'd expect. I'm guessing they're probably tarot sized. I don't know. Um, they might be tarot sized, they may not. Uh, in addition, you do get a number of cardboard evidence tokens on a punch board, a bag to put those in, and just a, uh, I think nine or 10 wooden markers. I, I have seen people complaining that they are not a standard size. And yeah. sleeving them is a pain in the butt. Yeah, see, I, like I said, it's a weird size. I was guessing tarot size, but probably not then. Uh, overall, I got to say, components are good quality to excellent. Uh, rules in particular are extremely well written. Like whoever the rule editor is at, rule editor and designer at Capstone, thumbs up. Um, they even did the color coding thing, which we've talked about a ways to make your games easier to learn is to color code your rules and the, the various sections. So when you're looking up stuff, it's easy to find. And they did that, which is great. Uh, the rules are surprisingly thick, but that's actually because more than half of the book is historical information uh, for people like me who don't actually know that much about the history or the people involved in the Watergate scandal. Okay, now we joke a lot about not discussing the theme in our games, but it's kind of hard to avoid mentioning this one. But does it matter? Does it matter who Woodward and Bernstein are? What the what are the Watergate tapes? Should I know the identity, the true identity of their source, Deep Throat? Nope, not at all. Doesn't not in the least. This is an abstract strategy game with a pasted on theme, pretty much one hundred percent. I'd say about ninety percent, I guess. Like so, there's some themes about gaining motivation and what you're doing with evidence, but even the evidence is color coded. It's yellow evidence, green evidence, and blue evidence, and you're just trying to collect the pictures of people, which they have names on them, so they're real people, to a picture of uh, Nixon in the center. None of it matters whatsoever. Uh, perhaps. The game mechanics are tied into the theme, but it's very slightly. Um, there is definitely the Watergate tapes come out, and that lets you flip some evidence from one side to the other. That's about it. It's all mechanical. Okay. Now, uh, I noticed a couple of reviews mentioning that there was a lot of reading on some of the actions, and it could have possibly benefited from a bit of iconography. Uh, again, going back to ways we've talked about making it easier. Uh, is that something you noticed, or...? I, I didn't mind reading the cards. Uh, to me, it's no worse than any other card game. Any card giving. If you played card giving dueling games like Magic or whatever, you're used to reading fairly extensive. It's like, do this, then do this, then do that. Or Terraforming Mars, right? It's like right. no worse than that. I guess they could have put some symbols for discard this card or draw it, but I don't see how that's any better than writing it. All right. Well, now that we know what you get, how about you give us an overview of play? All right, so on Watergate, one player is going to take on the role of the Nixon administration while another player is playing the editor of the Washington Press. The goal of the Washington Press is to connect two witnesses by a chain of evidence to Nixon. The Nixon player's goal is to build enough momentum to stay in office before that happens. All this plays out through a card-driven tug-of-war style mechanic. Now, to start a game, you're going to put the board on uh, between the two players. They're each, you each have a side. You're going to take your personal momentum cards, put them beside the board, shuffle your other 20 remaining cards, put the initiative card beside the board with the press facing. Uh, so press has initiative to start. Uh, evidence tokens are placed into a bag. The witness tokens are left off the board. Now, each round starts with players drawing a number of cards based on who has initiative. It's either five or four. 
Um, the Nixon player then is going to pull three evidence tokens from the bag and put them on the zero spot of the research track. They get to see these. The editor does not. The initiative token and one momentum token are also pushed on the zero spot. Now, I mentioned the research track. This is a track on the side of the board that has 11 spots on it. The middle being zero, then five spots counting down from one to five towards Nixon and five spots counting from one to five towards the, um, the editor. The initiative token and everything, everything starts at zero. Now, the evidence tokens are in three different colors, yellow, green, and blue, and there are a couple tiles that are mixes. So there's a tile that'll be like blue and yellow and there'll be one that's yellow and blue. And again, the Nixon player gets to see these, but the editor does not. Okay, so nothing especially complex, no. uh, pretty straightforward. And again, all leaning towards this, this, this tug of war theme that mm -hmm. really kind of dominates the game. Yeah, exactly. So now the game, the player is gonna play a card, then the opponent's gonna play a card, go back and forth. The person with initiative is gonna get one more action than the other player. So having initiative is a big part in this game. Each card has two ways to be played. Every card's got a number and an evidence token color showing in the top left of the card. If you use it for that, you ignore the rest. The other part of the card is a, as Sean mentioned earlier, large block that describes an action. Play a card for you, it's really gonna move one of those things on the research towards your side the number on the card. If you're moving evidence, your card has to match the evidence color. So it's like, oh yeah, blue. If I play a three, I move a blue evidence three towards my side. If I I could instead move the initiative, or I could move that momentum token. If you ever get something all the way to your side, so to the five spot, you can claim it right then, and then it can't get pulled back the other way. So when, once you get the five, it's yours guaranteed. Right. So that's you know you've got you you've you've got all the evidence. It's locked in. It's you know. You can't, yeah. you can't deny the evidence sort of thing. Right. You can't, you can't get rid of it or you've locked in initiative or this year you have, or I don't even know if it's a year, this, this turn, you have the momentum guaranteed. Right. Now the action cards, this is a card driven exception based game, like every card game out there. Um, most of the cards are event cards. You do the big thing on the card and then it's removed from the game. These cards are, again, thematically all tied to actual historic events that happened during the Watergate scandal. Um, in addition to events, the Nixon deck has conspirators. These do give something. They do some kind of event, but stay in the deck. They can be used a number of turns. Similarly, the editor has journalist cards, and they do the same thing. You do something with it, and it goes to your discard and can be used again. Now, these do all kinds of things. Some of them will allow players to place witness markers onto the board. Um, which is one of the goals of the game is to try to connect them. The Nixon player can, when they place witness tokens, place them face down. So the witnesses are the different people. I can't remember. There's like nine or so of them that go on the outside. So if the editor finds a witness, they go face up and they're a witness for the editor, right? For the paper, which is what they're trying to win. Whereas if Nixon finds the evidence, the, the witness, uh, the administration got to them first, however they, they got to them. And then that person's placed face down. So you can't use that witness. Now, the actions on these cards are the meat of the game, and there are too many of them. Everyone is unique. Everyone has its own page in the rulebook describing how to use it in case you're confused. Far too many to get into here what they do, but they do all kinds of things like take evidence tokens early, draw extra evidence tokens, move the research track, usually move multiple things like move two evidence and the thing and do this, force your opponents to do cards, take an extra turn, seize initiative. 20 different basic effects on each player's deck. Right. So yeah, that's a, a, hunk of, a hunk of things to remember. It's not like you're going to be memorizing all those cards anytime soon. Oh, and that I think a huge part of relearning to enjoy the game is the time to learn what your opponent's deck and do. The action play just continues back and forth until both players are out of cards. They played their four or five cards. At the end of each round, now here's where this research track matters in the tug of war, you're going to get everything that's on your side of the track. Evidence collected is placed on the board. Now, the board is a big cork board with just a bunch of interconnecting strings with pins, and you're going to put your evidence on a spot. And what you are trying to do as the editor is to connect a path of evidence tokens between two of the witnesses to Nixon, whereas Nixon does the same thing, but they're placing the evidence tokens face down, which is blocking a spot. So they're trying to stop the editor from making this connection of two witnesses to Nixon. Momentum tokens you collect, and that just shows that that whatever that round, you have the momentum. 
After collecting a set number of momentum tokens, the editor unlocks some powerful abilities. Uh, again, these are historic events like the Watergate trials or the impeachment of the president for collecting their fifth one. Now, the Nixon player doesn't get anything for collecting these, but they do win the game if they're able to collect five of them, which represents them having enough momentum to make it to the end of their term. This is one of the ways that the, the, the administration can win the game. Next, the player who took the initiative token pretty simply gets the initiative next turn. If it's still sitting on the zero spot, you actually just swap, so initiative flips the other player. Game continues until either Nixon has collected five Minson tokens, Nixon wins, the momentum tokens run out, another way Nixon can win, or the editor of the Washington Post manages to connect two witnesses through Nixon or to Nixon through a chain of evidence, which is, of course, an editor win. Right. So if only Nixon had had a Republican dominated Senate, he too could have avoided impeachment. Yes, <laughs> I don't know if there's a particular card in there for that one. Uh, now, on to my thoughts about the game. Now that you know how to play, that's it. It's a tug of war. I have heard a ton of great things about this game, like all kinds of board game media. Everyone is talking about Watergate. At this point, as of uh, actually technically two days ago, this game has had seven different award nominations. It's won three of those, including the 2019 Golden Geek Best Two-Player Board Game Award. That's a big one. That's from the users of Board Game Geek, the alpha gamers in our community. This game has a lot of fans. Every time I share a picture of this game on Twitter or talk about it on Facebook, I have people commenting about how much they love this game. People have a lot of love for this game. I'm sorry to say I am not one of those people. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It has a very strong community, but I do notice that there is a quiet undercurrent of people who do feel the same as you. And we'll get in, yep. what it, we'll get into what that feeling is. But uh, they are there, so you're not yep. unique, uh, <laughs> just not uh, as loud as the people who really love this game. There you go. It's good. It's good to know I'm not alone. At least I feel slightly better. Um, I will say, like positively. I was impressed by the quality. Uh, the design is solid. Like, it, the, there is a solid game here underlying this theme. I was extremely impressed by the size. Like, this is one of those small footprint games. This should be perfect for Deanna and I. These are the games we bring to Jack's Castro Pub on a weekend, and we have some pints and be playing. Uh, plus, for an abstract game, and realize that's what this is. This is an abstract strategy game that happens to have a Watergate theme. Uh, there's some good meat here, like especially trying to learn those cards. So it's nice to find a heavier small two-player game because there aren't a lot of those out there. Most of the two-player games out there are kind of light and fluffy and fun. This is definitely a heavy strategy game. The rules were fantastic. Like some, again, some of the best rules I've ever seen in a rule book. And I got to say, I appreciate all the history that's in there for people who don't know it. This isn't a complicated game either though, despite the weight like, I just taught you how to play, and I'm pretty sure, Sean, if we sat down right now and played, you'd be able to play just based on my description of it. It's pretty simple. It's a tug of war, stuff back and forth. So it's interesting. I see a lot of people referring to this as Twilight Struggle, the easy version, uh, right? It's It's got a lot of that, that, that back and forth balance, but it's not the heavy weight yep. slog that Twilight Struggle is. Yeah, so basically it, it wasn't what I expected from the game. And I don't know what I expected, but this wasn't it. Like, I, I don't know. I expected something. People keep talking about how dramatic the game is and how stressed out they get and how they keep pulling it back from the brink. Right. And I, we never really got that because this game basically is a tug of war between two players for five actions, objects, each round. Three pieces of evidence, the initiative and the momentum. And you're just playing tug of war with those five objects Rinse, repeat, do it again. Play tug of war those five objects. Play tug of war those five objects. And just keep doing that. Like, generally, it just keeps going like that. You get a bit. I pull it a bit back. You get a bit. I pull it a bit back. And then someone plays a big event that messes everything up. Suddenly, a whole bunch of stuff moves. Or the token you thought you were going to collect vanishes from the board. Or it was on your four. And suddenly, it's all the way down on the opponent's three spot. Now, at that point, you either have a counter what just happened. Or you don't. And that's it. You're like, oh, you did it. You pulled the big move. Good job. Or, oh, no, no, I can counter that. And and now, to be fair, this is this seems to be what really drives a lot of people to the game, um, yeah. to to having that 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 sudden shift, 
And, and so you're, you're, you're tugging back and forth until someone manages to get that one card that makes it go the other way. And then the game is done. And that is, a, is another big feature of this game mm. is that it's quick. Right. Oh, yeah. So a lot of people are saying, you know, you play it for that big moment and then you jump right back into it because you haven't been playing all that long and you want more. Uh, fair enough. Yes. I was impressed by the mechanics and concept. I get it. I, and I see why people might like it, like you just said, but I, I don't know. I just didn't find it fun. Like f tug of war wasn't that aging. Like it, it's an interesting concept. You're pulling stuff back. And I'm like, I'm playing like five games of tug of war at once. And it's just way more abstract. Like I said before, you asked about the theme. None of that matters. Like, like you could be pulling back and forth. I don't know. It could be a fishing game with five different types of fish and which angler gets the initiative to cast first. And it would still work just as well. And the goal of the one team is to connect two fish to the, the prize in the middle where the opponent, I don't know why there'd be a bad guy in a fishing game. All right. So maybe my, maybe my, my, my theory of turning it into a fishing game may not work, but whatever it's, it's Pokemon and you're trying to catch it. And the other team's team rocket. And you're trying to find evidence of different Pokemon in the fields and Team Rocket's trying to hide the evidence, whatever. It, it would still work. The game would still work. I expected more from that. It was definitely more abstract. There wasn't really anything here that made me feel like I was actually collecting evidence or putting clues together. No, it was just I was putting counters on a board. Right. Now, it could be that you're not connected to the theme, right? You're not American. It's true. Uh, you've got no connection whatsoever no. to Watergate. Um, and a history buff may find more connectivity into the actions than not. I, again, I haven't played this, so mm. I can't say for sure. Uh, but uh, that there is that possibility. It's true. The other thing I found that I that surprises me by how many people like this game is how high the random factor is, it is in the learning curve too. Because until you've memorized those twenty cards, well, forty cards, I guess, because you got to know your own cards and your opponent's cards, the game's almost impossible to predict. And like I said earlier, it's like you're back and forth, back and forth. Boom! You did the big thing, and it's like, oh, well, you got the big thing before I got the big thing, so you win. Which is all just a matter of what card came up first in the deck, right? Like, you you you're playing, especially in your early games. You're like, oh, I'm doing well. Everything's coming my way. I'm gonna get all the evidence this turn, and then all of a sudden, your opponent drops a card that ruins everything. All the planning you did that turn, your your whole organization, your whole plan gone out the window because they had the right card. And I gotta say, knowing what your opponent's cards do does greatly mitigate this because there's that oh wait i don't want to pull too much because they might have that card but then there's the randomness factor like that most your opponent has five of their cards at their hand if they didn't have the initial they only have four that's only four out of 20 like you can do the math in your head somewhat but it's still very random like do they have the card or not i guess there could be a whole poker like bluffing element to the game that i didn't really get into of the oh well if you try to put that through i got the filibuster in my hand i'll be able to stop you and meanwhile you're bluffing maybe that's an aspect of the game i didn't dive into but to me it just felt very random and i can see how some players might found it to be funny. like most of them i'm like i ah, some of this oh okay here you go. stop yeah yeah put all the evidence okay let's play the next round well, now that you got so much evidence, there's no way I'm catching up. I guess I'll play this. Like, that's more how I felt playing this game. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I The reviews for it are very mixed. Um, a lot of people mentioned 13 Days uh, yeah. as a comparative uh, game, uh, both as difficulty and, and, and mechanics and everything. Uh, so 13 Days, the Cuban Missile Crisis came out in 2016. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a fan of that, I think you're probably going to be a big fan of Watergate as well. Right. Um, it's, it, there are really mixed reviews on it. I mean, they are trending high, uh, and there are a lot of people who really love this game, mm -hmm. but if you actually start looking through the people who have taken the time to, to put their reviews in there, there are a lot of people out there who are commenting on the, uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a meaty game up until the end where it becomes the randomness really takes hold as yeah. who gets that card, um, and things like that. So you're not alone, uh, but I think there are definitely uh, a group of people who enjoy that level of both thought and randomness because of the Back speed of it gets, um, and, and and the fact that you can sit down and you know play three or four games. Without too much difficulty, swapping, you know, swapping turns back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or you know, I really want to work on Nixon tonight. Let's play a few games and, and see if I can get my Nixon 
uh, <laughs> technique down. No, fair enough. Uh, I got to say the uh, Twilight Struggle, it's been too long since I played it, felt like I was way more in control of my fate. So I, I enjoyed that a lot more than I did this. Though Twilight Struggle, when we played, took us two nights. It was a leave it set up overnight, go to bed and play again in the morning. So yeah, it's there is one. definitely that there. Yeah, yeah. It's a bigger one. I don't know. I, I I appreciate the fact people like this game. Like that, I, I there's a lot of love for this game and all all have fun with it. That's great. This one just doesn't seem to be one for Deanna and I. Now, due to this, despite all the buzz, I gotta say, try before you buy. Like that, th this is very firmly in that. This is not a game I recommend anyone and tried because it won the 2019 Game of the Year Awards or it's nominated for the Games 100. Don't just go with the hype on that. I think you want to try this one out before you buy it, which unfortunately is a little difficult in today's society, but if you can, give it a try. It's a very well-designed game. It's a really neat abstract. Um, it's kind of, it's interesting to see this theme in a game. We'll put it that way, even if the theme isn't that well tied in. I it just, the tug of war back and forth ruined by a random card draw just wasn't my taste, but that might be the perfect game for you and all the power to you. Yeah. Now just remember that, uh, this game is a, about a two and a bit weight where a twilight mm. struggle is a three and a half. Yeah. So uh, there you go. That's so, you good... know, if there's a significant weight shift when you're moving from this to Twilight Struggle. And you see that when you get into, you know, your your time played, essentially. I just, I don't see the comparison. I was thinking that's probably because I haven't played Twilight Struggle in a long time. And like, yeah, Twilight Struggle, you have that tug of war, but it's in each individual part of the board. And it's like, it's, I don't know. It's not just, I, I don't know. I don't think I need to say anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, should, I should play Twilight Imperium again. Then maybe I can compare the two. I really should play Twilight Imperium again, to be honest. It was a really good game when we did play it. But yeah, unfortunately, Watergate, not for me. Well, for a slightly more in-depth look at Watergate, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.